Okay, so as of right now, don't worry, we're not working on my truck today, okay? I just have this open so I can use some references. So I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace. He's got a 2008 Ram 4500 and he's having some charging issues. Apparently, from what I understand, the previous owner uh, tore up a lot of the wiring for the alternator and tried to bypass and do this and that, and I have no idea, right? And I like the truck. I can't afford it cash right now because he wanted like 16000 I don't have the cash for that right now. But I know these trucks inside and out. I know how to make these trucks work. Third gens are just my thing. Doesn't matter if it's six, seven, five, nine, this and that, whatever. So here's what we're going through and doing. Obviously my connector for the five, nine is different. Sorry, I had a phone call. But obviously the five, nine and the six, seven alternators are a little bit different. They have different connectors. You can see this one here is like that. So what I was actually gonna end up doing and I understand that I can't test it 100% because I have a 5.9, he has a 6.7. But what I went and did was, we have the voltage regulator. I get some guys that talk shit on these, I don't know. I've These things are great. I don't care what people say. And they're super cheap to replace if you ever have an issue. They're cheaper than a PCM. We have the connector here. We have the alternator connector for the new truck. And then we have one of these guys for the fuse box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a wire harness built for his truck a while, and then that way when I go down there, it only takes 20 minutes to do it. On this connector, I'm gonna leave it empty. I'm assuming, but I'm, I'm not gonna assume. I'm gonna actually go through and check out the wire harness. But this one here should be the positive right here on the top, and then this one with the black wire should be the negative. This one here in the middle, this goes to a switched power and goes to this connector, and then this one here is a ground and that one will go to that one and then this case gets grounded so what i think we're going to do i'm going to take the pictures on his engine bay we're going to try to make this look a lot nicer than factory and make it simple for him because he's got work for the truck but he doesn't you know he can't use it the way it is so right about here i'm going to check the engine bay and see if that works for his truck and we're going to tee right into the tip them right here with the splice and then we'll run two little wires along here and to his alternator, it'll be nice, clean, it'll look factory, we have loom. I just went and bought a shitload more loom because I've been using the hell out of it on customer stuff. You can see I have a shitload of it, so we have to use it. And then we also have this, this should be 12 gauge. Um, they claim that's 12 gauge, but again, this is gonna be more than enough for what we need. I made sure to grab an entire spool of that. It says 12 gauge down there. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. And then we're gonna loom it up, make it look good for the guy. We're gonna get this guy installed as well, figure out how, uh, how big we need to make it, and we'll go from there. Also, these are sold. I just got paid for these, but if you guys are interested in any of the stuff, we just added some things to the collection. We have the entire floor piece and everything. This has to be local pickup because I got shipping quotes on it and it was too much. So 200 bucks for that. Local, 250 for the for this. Or, sorry, 300 for this, 300 for this. We got guys asking left and right and whatnot, so I figured I'd just give you an update. We need to get 250 for this. And I did repost this. Anthony's supposed to be coming and picking this stuff up, but I reposted it just in case someone was interested in it on Marketplace. But there you go. Now we're gonna get back into it. This the guy already paid me for it, Venmo, but he can't pick these up till tomorrow, so those are gone. But I got 250 bucks for those, and these tires new apparently go for 410 a piece. So I gave the dude a really good deal. So those two alone are almost new, and then those two are a little choppy. So I mean, you get two tires, and then those I just throw with it. So and then the other set of tires also sold. So I got 200 200 for them. So moving that toolbox, basically I made 450 bucks to to move that toolbox for for my dad. So I do take payment on like items and stuff. So if you have stuff to give me that I can sell, I do work for that too. All right, so what we're gonna do, you see that butt connector there? First thing we're doing is cutting that guy off because that's garbage. We don't want that, we're throwing that away. We're gonna be using these, which I really, really like this kit and I'm gonna buy a second set eventually. Uh, I also went, yeah, here we go. Not that we're gonna need these today, but I also went and bought a second set of these guys here. So we also have these. Now I am gonna be, uh, I'm, I'm trying to showcase my electrical ability on these trucks and show you guys how good of a wiring guy I can actually be. 
And then for this small stuff, we have these really, really nice ones right here. All right, so here's what we've come up with, all right? So we know that sits there. You guys can see everything's all nice and sealed. So this will go into the fuse box. Obviously, when we get there, we'll be able to, like, it would be nice to have the vehicle in front of me to build this out. Um, I have mine for a reference, so I know how long I need to make everything. And worst case scenario, I've put the positive to the non-white, non-black line, and then the negative to the, you know, black line. And then we'll find when we get there, we're going to pinpoint it, figure out which one is key on power. We'll put that to it. We'll put our two fuses in. This is going to run along the uh, along the radiator in the front and then we'll plug this in and if this is wired correctly we will have charging if it is if these are backwards all we'll have to do is just flip these the other way but again i'm pretty sure these are correct so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and loom all of this make it look good get it all zip tied up and i'm going to make this look like a factory harness for you guys wondering about the diagram first before i do that though remember the middle is switched power to the positive of the alternator and then the green here is negative you know that goes to the other side of the alternator and then this gets grounded through the case now here you go so this goes into the fuse box as i was saying earlier this here sits on the firewall and then this nice harness over here will come and plug right into the alternator so i'm going to show you guys what this will look like on the truck all right, so I don't want to crush it or anything. I don't have it all the way down. I just kind of plugged it into a random one. Um, so this will go. I'm going to feed this nicely into the side of the box, you know, not being terrible with it. And then this will run all the way along here and then plug into the alternator. It'll look just like a factory loom, only better than a loom. And that's what we're going to call it. Let me get that out of there before I completely ruin it. But you guys get the point. So that is what we're going to take down there as the finished product and obviously like I'll tighten it up when, once we get down there and everything but basically made this harness from scratch yes it's only a two wire harness it, it is what it is you know anybody can build one of these but point you guys let me know what do you think does it does it look factory does it not I did look at the engine bay pictures and it looks like he has one actually mounted right there uh, from the previous owner but if you don't know how to wire these up and do these correctly it's just one of those like it's just going to turn into a clusterfuck so I actually went, you know, and purchased the proper pigtail end and all that stuff. So all this stuff will be nice. I'm going to set this in the, uh, in the passenger seat and we will get ready for him on Thursday. I really do enjoy doing things like this. Like it's just a work of art, you know, it's just, it's just two wires, a little bit of a splice somewhere in here, but I think I did really good on that. So Hit me up for all your wiring needs. I try to make it look as factory as possible. So I was looking at pictures of six, seven engine bays, and I guess the coolant bottle goes like right here and like these, but I did notice there's enough of an indent here that it can actually fit here. And I didn't want to run it over there because then I got to run the wiring the whole way over here when I can just make it clean and, you know, put it right here, one wire into here, the two wires right across and into here, rather than trying to come across the exhaust manifold and just, Try to make it as clean and serviceable as possible. I love being right next to the high. I just washed this thing yesterday too. Look at that. I just washed this yesterday. Freaking Cummins. Hey, if anyone's got a fifth gen front bumper, let me know. I don't wanna throw one of them on here. All right, so I have made the drive down to Maryland. I've been sitting here, I think I got here at like six in the morning, something like that. So I told the guy eight, which is fine. Um, we have the part right here, as you guys can see. So we're gonna make this thing all nice and neat. Um, nice little harness, and then this guy here. So, uh, yeah, socks and all that, mayo, bullshit. So I made the two hour trip down, uh, made some money yesterday, some money before. We're doing, we're doing pretty good this week. Uh, so we're down here, I think, um, yeah, all we pretty much gotta do is install this part. No, I did, make a deal with this guy because this was a job that I got off of Marketplace. I saw that he had a truck posted there. It had some issues and he can't get it to charge because of somebody trying to rig the wire harness and bypass the alternator from what I heard. So I went back and looked at the pictures of the guy's engine bay and I noticed there was one of these mounted on the firewall. 
So had I known that, I wouldn't have bought another one, but you know, you never know if it's good, so we just got new parts, uh, everything is good there. So what we're gonna end up doing is taking that one off, replacing it with this one, putting it at a different spot, and basically making the alternator work the way that it should, uh, the same way that I did with my 12 valve. Now, I really do like that external voltage regulator. I know, I don't know why, there's been guys that have like complained about it and said that like it's not really all that good and it, it's actually pretty decent i mean i got like a year and a half out of my one and i don't even know that it was that that failed the first time it might have just been my own negligence or whatnot but i did end up replacing it after about a year and a half and everything's been you know fine with it i mean they're cheap and they're effective and when the ecu i'm assuming that the guy bypassed it because of the PCM. PCM's a pretty expensive part, and if the voltage regulator goes out, it's not the end of the world. You really don't have to worry about it. If you just install one of these things, yeah, it's not the best thing in the world, uh, you know, if you want it to be 100% factory, but it does work, and it can be made to look factory and also can save you $1,200 because the amount of money that I'm charging him to install this, yes, we are doing mobile rates and whatnot, but I made a deal on that because I'm like, you know what? I don't mind getting the job and making a new customer. I'll cut him a deal on some of the drive time and whatnot, you know, just charge him for the fuel, a couple hours of labor, and we'll call it good. All right, nice cold morning. Here we go. As you guys will see, we got one over there, which we're going to take out. Unplugged. This is what we're dealing with here. So it looks like somebody butt connected the wires and set them in there. So we're gonna do we're gonna install our harness right nicely along here. Unfortunately, I thought that was gonna fit according to the pictures. I was wrong. So I'm gonna have to find a spot for that and we'll go from there. I want to make it nice and clean as much as I can. But that's what we're dealing with. So we're going to try to get it as clean and nice looking as possible. And we shall go from there. I'll update you guys as we get there. So here's the old one. Looks like it's brand new. And then these, we're, we're holding it up in there. Not really all the great grounded. And then once you get them tight, they kind of stripped out. So we're not going to be using those. It's bullshit. So now we need to find a place to mount this guy. And we'll go, I'll let you know where we go from there. Alright, so this was an old connector on here. So we pulled it off, put a nice new one. We're going to put it right between. Alright, you guys can see, nice and pound down. Take a nice 17 mil socket. Give it the old tappy tappy. So you got it on the other side. You can see how high those terminals are, kind of just slapped on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen these back up, tap it down, make sure it's got a nice solid connection, and then we'll start wiring the alternator up. So I had to uh, literally pry the shit out of this one to get it off. One, that connection's broke, whatever that goes to. I have no idea, but I will follow it. Oh, it goes to that. I have no idea what that goes to. Let's follow that. That goes over here to something. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to rewire that, splice a new one into that, but i got to get that clean before I do anything. If you guys saw what it looked like before, there's what we got it looking like after, so we just need to be able to get this guy on here. And it is a positive, I did check. Look how nicely that's on there now. So we're going to get that tightened up, and then we have the bolt that comes through, and then we have the nut on the other side. I just need to fix this guy here and figure out what size that is. All right, make it nice. Look at that, nice and shrunk and everything. So, you know, a little bit of gap on the top and whatnot, but we're gonna get that put back on. Right, here's where we're at. Got all the battery terminals nice. You can see we added that little guy there for whatever that is. Next step, we start working on this guy down here. You can see that needs to go in there. Went plugged in, nothing worked. So that told me, probably hooks it up backwards. So what did I do? Because I couldn't test it on my truck the other day. So I had the wires wrong. Remember yeah, earlier in the video, uh, red went to white and black went to black. Well, it was actually the opposite. I kind of figured it would be, but there you go. All right, so we're getting everything cleaned up. These three have key on power, so we're gonna use one of those for the Adafuse right here. 
and we're gonna re-splice it back in. I did have to lengthen it a little bit and we also had to switch the two wires around. And now we have charging battery. So he's been fighting that issue for since he bought the truck. So we're gonna get that nice and routed up here. Uh, you guys can see this whole box is like kajiggered. Um, it's supposed to be able to sit in there. It does not sit in there right. And then you can see all the electrical issues that has half the wires are butt connected. So I'll see if he wants to get all those taken care of, but we're gonna get that installed into one of these three. All right, here's where we are at. We've got the nice little wire right here. It goes in through the side and boom, we have a, I put a 20 in it. I'm not sure. I think 20 is perfectly fine for that. We're gonna get this closed and then we're gonna test it, make sure everything works. Right, drive shaft installed. All good. Grease is all done on there as well. It's funny that that's all that holds these things on is these little 3 8 bolts, but they are tight. Now to get out of here and go finish that other truck up. All right, so earlier we had perfect voltage and now it wants to shoot right to 18 volts. Now I remember I had this issue before, so I didn't need to figure this out. Um, I forget what I did to solve it on my last truck. So she's all grounded and everything. I knew the wires were switched. I'm trying to think. Because, yeah, I switched them up here at the connector. And then everything was charging correctly. So, I guess we'll figure that out. And uh, we'll get her charging correctly. You can see we have voltage, 12.4. So it did charge, but we'll get her done. All right, so here's where we are at. I got a ground on the bottom of this, even though I know it's grounded to the frame. We took that as per recommended and went and grounded it to the alternator and we're still getting about 17 volts i'm wondering how old these batteries are because you can see that the alternator is charging this battery but this is reading from this side and i'm i'm also i hardwired it into this one just to make sure so obviously the cables are good we have good beefy cables but i'm not sure uh What's going on here, why we're getting max voltage, you can see what uh, previous owner did right there. But we have a good connection here. All the connections are good, we got ground. We have, if I hook this uh, connector up the other way, uh, we don't get any charging at all. So we know the connector's hooked up correctly. I went and did a continuity test all the way down here. We checked everything here. Um, and funny enough, I've even replaced like we have a second one of these to try and it's still coming up 17 volts. You guys will see if I get her fired up. Oops. See right there, watch the voltage. All the way to about the 17, 18 mark. So we know she's high. I wonder if the grid heater's drawing. So I just unplugged the grid heater. You can see right there. So it can no longer draw. Let's see if that's causing an issue. Let's go fire it up and see if the voltage stays back down to normal. Maybe it was drawing and the alternator's trying to overcompensate. Worth a try, right? No, that's definitely... No, that's way high. Bastard, this thing's fighting. All right, little update for you guys. If I unplug the regulator, it still charges at an extremely high rate, like not this side. If I just come over here and unplug this, it still charges at an obnoxiously high rate. So what I'm thinking is, so one way, let's see, I'll show you guys here. Um, I have these backwards right now because that's the only way it's charging. But like, if I hook, I'll have to pull this back. But if I hook the, uh, I guess on this side, you can see they're red. So if I hook the red to black and the black to red, it charges at 18 volts. But if I go the opposite way, nothing happens at all. So we have some issues. All right, so at this point, we're just wondering if maybe one of the terminals got switched and both of these popped because if you do hit these backwards they pop so he's gonna go get one now worst case scenario we just return it and there's nothing wrong with them 
but we're gonna try a new one just for shits and giggles because if you flip-flop the terminals they charge at 18 volts but the reason for that is because there's power going directly to the opposite terminal wow that literally that... wow that was some bullshit but there's power going to the opposite terminal which means that the alternator is getting turned on 100% of the time, no anything. And even if you unplug the thing, you, you unplug the regulator, it's now, you know, it's already too late. So that also means that the alternator is putting, because this has voltage, so 12 volts on one side and negative on the other. And it probably put it directly through. Maybe it, you know, terminated it and we didn't have enough grounds in the beginning. So we now have a ground from the alternator to the battery, from the alternator over to here and then another ground up to this battery from this guy here even though we're grounded here we're gonna try it we'll see what happens so I also did verify while this is plugged in that you have 12 volts positive in the middle because if you flip it you have 12 volts positive up here which again will ruin one of these things so I'm assuming we just have two bad ones and hopefully we get a new one and it works perfectly all right here's where we're at I went through, I put this harness back together. Obviously it doesn't work, that's why we were, oof. Oh, it's with the, oh, the right there, frick. All right, so I went through, did this. I did ground uh, the one pin and nothing is making a difference. Nothing is allowing this thing to charge other than at 18 volts. All right, real quick, we're gonna close the video out here. Unfortunately, that truck today kicked my ass. I was super confident about getting there. I've installed so many of those, uh, external voltage regulators and this truck just for the life of me would not charge or do any of that and unfortunately it is what it is like I, I'm gonna end up fixing this truck for the guy but I want to see uh, some of your guys is like what do you guys think I missed I went through cleaned every single ground on it fixed all of the battery terminals made sure all of the wiring was perfect every single thing down to the T and the only thing I could either get it to not charge at all or I could get it to charge at its max voltage I could not for the life of me, get that thing to actually charge where it's supposed to. We tried three voltage regulators and nothing. I verified they were all good. Uh, well, I verified the last one was good. The other two were kind of like all over the place. So we tried a third one and it did not work. The alternators are new. The, the alternator is new. The batteries are new. The wiring is new. Everything is new and nothing is making it charge. I know it needs a PCM. I know it needs a wire harness. That's why we went with the external voltage regulator. Um, I'm trying to do everything I can to get this guy helped out and get that thing back on the road. He doesn't care what kind of money he spends as long as there's progress being made. So we can't just sit, like I worked on that truck for about eight hours, literally going through diagnosing, trying different wiring schematics, trying everything, and I could not get that thing to work. I remember when I had, I've, like I said, I've, I've installed quite a few of those voltage regulators. I've done them on mine. I've done them on Anthony's. I've done them on quite a few other trucks and they always just work. Like I never had an issue with the alternators not charging. Now all of a sudden this truck just does not want to charge. And I've even isolated it. I took an external jump pack and put it on the voltage regulator itself, all three of them. And it still did not charge the batteries other than 18 volts or nothing. And that depended on which way I flip-flopped the wires. So I've even added an extra ground. I've grounded the alternator to the battery. I've grounded the voltage regulator to the alternator. And I've also voted, grounded the voltage regulator to the battery. So I've gone through and done absolutely everything. I've even grounded the pin, the 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 ground from the, the two, uh, what do you call those? The two pins. I grounded one of them and even sent one over. And even still, it's like, it's just not doing it. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think I missed anything and I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoy this one. I've been awake for two days now. So I'm going in, get my cold shower and I'm going to bed. See you guys in the next video. Later.